Good noon time to everyone. The Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District Board of Trustees is now convened in a special call board meeting on Tuesday, July 7, 2020 in the boardroom of Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District Instructional Support Center located at 10,300 Jones Road, Houston, Texas at 12 p.m. This special call board meeting is to consider giving the Cypress Fairbanks ISD Superintendent authorization to proceed with the purchasing of technology items for students in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. During the course of this meeting, the board may determine that a closed session is necessary. In that event, the board will meet in a closed session to consider matters duly posted for this meeting as permitted by the sections 551.071 to 551.084, inclusive of the Texas Government Code. Item number one is public comments. Patrons who have duly registered per policy BED local may address the board and make policy statements on the agenda item during or before the board's consideration of the item. The board may allow public comment on agenda items at all meetings. The board will continue with the remaining agenda after the registered patrons have had an opportunity to speak and we have had no one sign up. So action item number two, 2A. The board will consider authorizing the superintendent to approve the purchase of devices for students, LTE internet access to students and other items needed to support a one-to-one -one solution through the Department of Information Researches, Resources purchasing cooperative at an amount not to exceed $44 million. Presenter today is Karen Smith. Paula Ross will not be here. Is Dr. Macias here? Mm -hmm. There, oh, I, there you are. Uh, Becky Cook, Roy Sprague, and Bill Powell. So I'll turn it over to Karen Smith. Before, before Karen gets started, I just want to give a, a little quick lead in. Uh, first of all, if Marnie doesn't mind, uh, it's it's not the agenda item, but I think we're okay legally. Introduce a new member of the team, Marnie. Yes, thank you very much. And I, he didn't know he was going to be on camera, so he's probably a little embarrassed. But I would ask my new assistant general counsel, Harry Wright, to stand up and say hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Marnie. It's good to have you. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Karen, you're up. Okay. Before Karen oh, comes up, Karen, I'm gonna, sit down again. I'm on. <laughs> just, just a quick lead in, and, and Karen, along with several on our team, are going to give you all the uh, details of our plan moving forward. But uh, it's no surprise to anyone around this dais or um, in the room or it. it in the community that we're going through an unprecedented time and uh, when you're going through an unprecedented time you do unprecedented things so uh, we are trying to prepare uh, not only for in-person instruction but we also want to uh, have the uh, richest um, curriculum along with the richest instruction that we can have virtually so that's what today is all about and uh, we're going to uh, make a presentation uh, to to you today about uh, um, it, you can see it's called CFI, CFISD Learning Together I, Everywhere. I kind of called it CFISD Live. So wherever you are, whether you're in person or at home uh, or wherever you might be, uh, we want to make sure that we uh, can, can uh, make sure that our kids get the richest experience. So Karen. Thank you, Dr. Henry, and thank you, President Covey and board members. We appreciate you being here today. Um, on Tuesday, June 23rd, the Commissioner of Education introduced the Texas Education Agency's Strong Start 2020-21 Preparing for Remote Instruction Guidance. In response to TEA's guidance for remote instruction, we would like to provide you an overview of the proposed CFISD Learning Together Everywhere, or LTE, one-to-one -one program. 
Presenting with me today are Karen Fuller, the Director of Network Infrastructure and Communications, and then Katie Gentry, Director of the One-to-One -one Program and Inventory Systems. Our district is very fortunate that both Karen and Katie have experience in implementing a successful one-to-one -one program in a, in a large district. I would also like to highlight some of the key players involved in developing and supporting this program. Paula Ross, uh, Assistant Superintendent of Technology Services and Information Systems, as well as the entire Technology Services team. And I also want to especially thank Dr. Linda Macias, um, Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Heather Bergman, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, and Becky, Becky Cook, Director of Instructional Technology. The CFISD Learning Together Everywhere, or LTE one-to-one -one program vision is to provide equitable access to all students. The one-to-one -one nature of LTE program will support students and connect them to high quality instruction and resources available, whether they are connecting virtually or in person. The program will support the Texas Education Agency's Strong Start Plan. And I will now turn it over to Karen Fuller so she can introduce the CFISD LTE one-to-one -one program. Good afternoon. The district is proposing a device for every student which will allow for instruction to continue no matter where the student is currently learning. Cameras and microphones will allow Zoom and other video conferencing resources to enhance instructional experience. Snap-on cases will be provided to protect the devices so that they can continue to use them throughout their life cycle. Based on instructional needs identified, the district has selected a Chromebook as the device of choice. The benefits of the Chromebook device are user-friendly, low-cost, high-quality device, long battery life, touchscreen, increased stability and security, quick startup and login. Now I'm going to turn this over to Katie Gentry to share more details of the CFISD LTE one-to-one -one program. Good morning. CFISD has issued devices in the spring and summer of 2020 to support the learning at home, summer school programs, and industry certifications and testing. Distribution was prioritized for special needs, ESL, at-risk, AP, and dual credit students. Additional distribution of devices was based on identified student need. The district is prepared to release a request for quotes immediately following this meeting for additional Chromebook devices to complete the one-to-one -one program. Once quotes have been received, the district will be able to determine the availability of, of devices and to develop the distribution plan. The district will use our current inventory system to track and distribute devices to students. Quotes will include accidental damage protection coverage in order to repair and redistribute devices. To assist with retrieval of lost devices, location software will be installed on all Chromebooks. Device repair will be managed by CFISD Technical Services. Safety and security are an important component of these devices. Chromebooks will be equipped with security features to prevent inappropriate activities and downloads. Whether students are using the device in a school building or off campus, their internet access will continue to be filtered through district technology services. No software can filter 100% of improper content. Parents and guardians should take an active role in monitoring their child's access to the internet and development of digital citizenship. Upon checkout of the Chromebook, parents and students will receive printed and electronic material regarding the CFISD internet filter and how to access online resources. Parents will also receive digital citizenship information and tips for monitoring their students at home. Students will participate in short Schoology courses on digital citizenship and Chromebook care throughout the year to ensure that they understand the best way to work in a digital environment with appropriate responsibility. A website will be created for the CFISD LTE one-to-one -one program that will include the distribution schedule, handbook, return process, reporting a device lost or stolen, resetting passwords, frequently asked questions, etc. This information will be available in both English and Spanish, and the handbook will be provided in print by request. An online portal will be developed to allow students to submit issues with their device. 
CFISD technicians will work with the student to resolve the issue or swap out the device. Students can request instructional support through Schoology. Technology services and curriculum instruction will collaborate with campus principals to provide an appropriate level of support and training to campus staff. Campuses will identify a point of contact to help facilitate the CFISD LTE one-to-one -one program. Technology services will provide students with devices as quickly as possible and also provide teachers with highly responsive support. And now I'm turning it back over to Karen Fuller to talk about internet access for students. Thank you. During the spring and summer of 2020, the district dis distributed hotspots to the households indicating a need for internet access. The district initiated a proof of concept to provide internet access by installing Wi-Fi on two school buses that were tested, with limited, tested in areas with limited internet access. The proof of concept was successful and holds promise for future planning. The district is prepared to release a request for quotes immediately following this meeting for a 4G LTE broadband wireless solution to support students without internet access. A 4G LTE broadband wireless solution will enable the district to provide students an unlimited data plan by connecting to a district managed mobile hotspot. Based on the survey sent to families, the district will distribute 4G LTE wireless broadband mobile hotspots. The 4G LTE wireless broadband solution will allow the district to filter content through CFISD. CFISD Chromebooks will be the only type of device that will be able to connect to the mobile hotspots. Unlimited internet access resources for learning will be available. Now I'm gonna turn it back to Karen Smith for closure and questions. As you can see, the CFISD LTE one-to-one -one program ties Schoology and CFISD Connect, which replaces learning at home, together to complete a high-quality instructional program. This program will position students to be successful in all learning environments. In conclusion, we are brought to the board to consider authorizing the superintendent to approve the purchase of devices for students 4G LTE broadband wireless solution and other items needed to support the CFISD LTE one-to-one -one program. At this point, the team will be available to uh, address any questions you might have. Dr. Henry? Uh, just, just one thing I wanted to add to this. It's not exactly on this subject, but it's the other half of it. But before people tune us out, I want to make sure that they hear. We're, we. Uh, we have been in the process over the last two months and will continue over the next month and a half also preparing for in-person classes. So I, I, want, I want to make sure that uh, we're going to have the two options available uh, once school rolls, rolls around for in-person uh, as uh, dictated by the state at this time. But also we want to make sure that we have that virtual option, a very rich virtual option available uh, to uh, parents and students that choose to go uh, that direction. So just wanted to, to make sure and clarify that uh, right now, based on the state's guidelines, we are preparing for in-person and virtual instruction to be available in the fall. Thank you, Dr. Henry. Ms. Heineman, would you have any questions? Um, yes, so um, Karen, I heard you say that um, the new Learning Together Everywhere CFISD Connect and CFISD Schoolology. Schoology. School, 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 I keep wanting to add an extra O. I know, school, we all do. We all okay, do. School, 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 Thank you for correcting me. Um, that replaces the learning at home completely. That we're, we're going to a new, a new um, platform. I think that's important for parents to, to know since some people had some struggles um, over the, uh, in the spring. Um, so, but asking, I have a question about one-to-one. One-to-one. So every student in Cypher SD will receive a Chromebook. 
Yes, that is the plan, is to provide every student a, a Chromebook, you know, and it'll be based on availability when those come in. Regardless of need, so whether they have Correct. access to technology at home now or not, or if they're sharing it with their parents or sharing it with their mm -hmm. siblings, every student, what if there are multiple students in the home? Yes, because one of the things that we found is that, you know, you have to kind of look at the spring maybe different from the summer, mm -hmm. and um, especially with a lot of the, um, uh, what I would call video streaming, where they're watching a teacher present, uh, what that does, now that's something separate with um, the, the LTE device, but what we ran into is issues with all of them being able to watch what mm -hmm. they need to watch when they need right. to watch it. Yep. And then also the fact with the actual LTE devices that we're talking about for internet access, uh, we're, we're, we're looking at that solution because what was happening is it takes more bandwidth whenever you have live instruction or a video type instruction. Right. Oh. All students will get a Chromebook device. And, and you're going to prioritize the rollout for that? Yes. Um, the, because all of the devices will not come in exactly at the same time, right. we will have to prioritize okay. uh, that. But I'll let Linda further address that just a little bit. Okay. Let, and before Linda uh, addresses the, the priority there, one of the things that we will do as we get closer to school starting is we will survey parents and see who will be uh, in person and who will be using the virtual option. So that can also help us when we get to the prioritization. So parents will be surveyed to state whether or not they will be sending their children in person to in-school classroom instruction or choosing or, to or virtual to, uh, and Teresa would you just give the guidelines that the state put forth about when we're allowed to for our, when parents are allowed to make that decision um, our plan currently and we've not finalized the details of that but our plan is towards the end of July we would send out information to parents so that they could make that election as far as virtual or face-to-face but we first thought it was important that we finalize our plans for virtual instruction because it will look very different than the learning at home program that parents and students experienced in the spring. So the opportunity for CNI to really finalize that, we can share all the details of that. Then in addition to that, share all the details about the health and safety protocols we will have in place for face-to-face -face instruction so that parents can make an informed decision. So to Dr. Henry's uh, question about the date for parents to make that election, we're going to do it at the end of July, but parents would have up until mm -hmm. August the 10th, which is two weeks prior to the first day of instruction, to change their mind. Um, what the state guidelines indicate, the district can put requirements that if a student elects virtual, we're not talking about the face-to-face, if a student elects the virtual option, we can establish requirements that, that would or criteria that would require the student to maintain that platform until the end of the grading period. Um, so we're still again working out the details and so that's why it's important before we start surveying and asking parents that they know what all the requirements and criteria will be for both of those. But this plan that we're proposing today or that we're hearing about today would take care of all students if we had to go all online, we would be fully prepared for that just in that's, case. That's what our plan is. As, as Karen said, it'll be a rollout because we've got to make sure we get the technology in. We've got some, some inventory on hand already and then mm -hmm. we wait for the rest mm -hmm. to, uh, to come in. We, we have worked uh, several plans out as possibilities for, for a rollout that we're looking at. We haven't confirmed it yet. But it, it, uh, we have numbers to, to look at if we have, like the campuses that are 8% or above economic advantage, how many computers do we need there? You know, those, those that are 75%. So we, have, we already have all of those numbers. Uh, we wanna look to see the parents that do have devices, but as you said, maybe only have two devices but have three children in there being able to, to look at delivering one there. Okay. So, but eventually we will get to where every single student would have a Cypher ISD mm -hmm. device. And even for the kiddos that their parents elect to send them to in-classroom instruction, they would have that support at home to still work on their projects, to do their work at home. So I think that's a wonderful <laughs> investment 
and to all of our students, whether they're receiving instruction in the classroom, in the building, or at home. That is correct, and as Teresa says many times, if we start, when we start school on August 24th, and we have face-to-face -face and, and online sections by parents, and if in a month, the, the state decides that we didn't shut school down, our students will not miss a beat mm -hmm. because they take their, they, they've got their uh, Chromebook that they bring back and forth mm -hmm. and the plan that we're establishing for instruction very much aligns to, to being in school with, with some also real life face-to-face -face instruction with teachers that it'll be easy to be able to go completely virtual uh, if the state shuts us down, but also uh, be able to first be able to open up and our kids not missing a beat. And I would just like to add to that, even for an individual student, that if there's an individual student that is in face-to-face -face and may become ill or need to self-quarantine, self-isolate for the 14 days, if we have that kid set up uh, ready to go with the device, they can immediately transfer into that virtual platform, never be counted absent, never get behind on work, and just continue uh, moving forward. So it provides this really true continuity of instruction and support for all students, mm -hmm. regardless of which platform. That's a great point. I have one last question and then I'll pass it on to um, my colleagues. Um, the ages, so is this for students from kindergarten through 12th grade? It is what? all of our students, okay. pre-K pre -K through okay. uh, 12th grade okay. will have access to a device. A device looks a little bit different from element for elementary. But, but we have we okay. are looking at device for every child. Okay, thank you. Dr. Ogletree. The, uh, are we talking about a, a course offering, complete course offering that uh, on this, Linda, for everyone, uh, every course that we offer, or is it a limited course offering for this virtual platform here. So we're still finalizing our, our, our plans for, for the classroom, Dr. O, but it certainly will look different than what it looked like uh, in the spring. Uh, the state provided some, some guidance on what we could be looking at, and so we are looking to be able to deliver to our students instruction that mirrors instruction in the classroom. And so there will be obviously, uh, there will be face-to-face, -face, uh, real life, uh, in-time instruction from teachers, as well as, just like in the classroom, the classroom, the teacher does a mini lesson, for example, and then the students go off to either work on independent work or group work, the teacher pulls some kids together, the student is over here at elementary doing, doing word work, uh, things like that that already occur in the classroom will be able to mirror through through our connect uh, or through our connect CFISD at secondary they'll follow the schedule they'll follow the schedule that that they would follow uh, in in uh, in face to face school classroom but again with opportunities in high school as well we have opportunities for where te the teacher uh, provides instruction and the students are doing independent work research either research or partner work. And so that will continue. They're not right in front of the, of the computer, but that's continuing as well. Okay. Uh, on the, uh, the prioritization that was done in the spring, uh, we are, did I hear you say we don't anticipate having to do that for the fall uh, if we, we're anticipating all the devices in. I'm gonna, if y'all tell me if it's different, uh, my understanding is we're leaving the devices out there that, that have already been delivered? Yeah. Basically what's happened, first of all, we have 10,000 devices that, have, are, that are out there right now that students are utilizing in summer school. And then we have another 30,000 devices available for use for students immediately. We've also ordered some additional, we'll be ordering additional devices. We already have a, a purchase order that was already out there for devices prior to this board meeting uh, that is separate from this request to the board. So there's some of those devices. And then, uh, th then we'll be putting in the order for this. And that's, this is why we came to you now is because everybody is after the same devices. And one of the things that we found out is that they are priori prioritizing with healthcare um, at first, but we are uh, 
a very uh, close relationship in with our vendors and they are working with us and our, the bid will be back on July 14th and then we will know on July 16th exactly how many we can get you know kind of a timeline of when those devices will be coming in okay well my question is if we if you prioritize special needs ESL at risk and AP students what percentage of students are being left out if, if that's the prioritization <clears throat> well dr. O that was our prioritization a prioritization to to begin delivering computers but that's not the only students who received the the technology once we got through that group then anybody else who told us that we knew of that needed uh, 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 a computer one was sent to them in in some cases they came to the school and picked them up in other cases they were they were delivered in fact yesterday we delivered more computers because as you as you know we we chose not to uh, continue forward with with face-to-face -face summer school so we had our algebra camp students that were going to come to face to face that needed their technology tools so we delivered those uh, yesterday and Paula and her team have been uh, having different opportunities for parents to pick up but also have been delivering technology so we started with that group but we had other kids that also received their technology and so now those students will continue to keep their technology and now and now we'll dig as far as we can to be able to provide what we have in, in, in place right now while we're waiting for the others to get in. Just, just so the board knows, and I don't know Karen or Linda who needs to answer this, uh, how, how many are we actually planning on ordering? Uh, how many do we currently have? How many have we already ordered? And then how many, if the board approves this request today, will we order? So parent, approximately in the district owns, whether they're distributed to summer school students or we still have them on the classroom, the district owns about 40,000 Chrome devices. During the summer school, we, di we, made, we distributed devices to kids during summer. Those are going to stay out. Today, we know we've got about 30,000 on hand that will start our distribution plan. So we've got a distribution plan that we're working with curriculum and instruction to start meeting the needs of students based on surveys. This request today, we're asking to purchase um, 75,000 devices over a period of time because we know that the supply for those devices, we can't get 75,000 devices in by August 1st that's a huge order to to place so over the the fall semester based on needs based on distribution based on what our instructional needs are both in in school and out of school we will develop a process our goal is by the end of this uh, fall semester every student have a device regardless of needs but we know because of the COVID and where we're at with meeting the needs to keep students engaged so they have the same experience in the classroom that they have at home, we're going to have to start looking at where those needs need to start at. And that's where we'll take our initial inventory that we have in place and start that distribution. And then we'll start receiving devices in after this quote is returned. We'll have a better defined timeline of when the additional ordered devices will be coming in for us to distribute to students. Well, well thank you. I guess that's, that's my, my question. The distribution, is it based upon need or just if, if I'm an AP student, do I, I get one even if I may not even need it? And, and it could be better served with some other students. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. And, and those yeah. are the plans that we're still working on, Dr. O. That's some of the things that uh, curriculum and instruction are continuing to work with to figure out what that distribution will look like. And I would say, I think that once we send out the information to parents and uh, are able to gather that data, absolutely needs gonna have to take priority because if a student, just because I'm an AP student, and I have two or three computers at home doesn't mean that that's who we're going to give the device to. So absolutely, those students without devices um, or access to internet would be at the top of the list. And then from there, CNI can prioritize those content areas and assist with that. 
Um, so. So we've already run several scenarios. We just don't know who needs them. All right. Thank you. Mr. Ryan. Are we are we currently using the Chromebooks? Is that what we have? Yes, we're the... currently using Chromebooks. Okay. Katie was my tech support for our sequestered board meeting, so I'm glad she didn't quit uh, <laughs> after working with you. Thanks, Katie. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you. Uh, and so in looking at this prior, where did we come up with the uh, – with the number of 44 million um th that that 44 million is 40 mi okay first of all it's it's about uh it's about 39 million in chromebook devices and then the remainder is for the lte devices as well as the connectivity for those devices and then we, and then anything else to kind of support that, just a small contingency to support that that we might not be aware of at this point in time. And the 40 million will be coming from bond funds and the, rem the remaining 4 million from the general fund. And if you recall, when we presented the budget to the board, we included 10 million for COVID-19 type items. And this mm -hmm. is exactly one of those type of items that'll be utilized for, is 4 million of that'll go towards uh, the co for these de uh, the connectivity for these devices. When we purchase these uh, Chromebooks, is it a? Are we actually purchasing the Chromebook itself? Yes, sir. So it's not a, it's not a lease of some sort to where. No, we're actually purchasing it. We're actually we, purchasing the Chromebook. And we found that the for for technology, really the best thing to do is purchase. We've we've evaluated both options. And then for uh, multiple languages, you had mentioned, I think, Karen, you might have said something regarding it. One of y'all said something. Uh, they they ended, yes. How yes. does that work when we have so many dialects here? Uh, and when you, t you talk about our new arrival center and those students, uh, how does that work in regards to the, the Chromebooks? So, Mr. Jackson, the, the you heard Karen share Jiminy that the, Pete. I mean, Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry, okay, Mr. Tom. Ryan. I usually don't ask this many questions, so now I'm throwing in with Tom. I mean, maybe two questions at the most last board meeting, maybe. And Don, you know, I really think that's that's meant to be a compliment. Right? <laughs> I'll take it that way, Tom, just so you feel good. <laughs> Mr. Ryan. Uh, you heard uh, Karen talk about these devices have have a uh, a mic and a speaker, and so for ELL ELL students, it's important to have that so they can be practicing the language and can hear the language. But as far as actually uh, having systems where uh, where they access software that they access, it's that's actually not in the computer. It's part of our software systems that we have. Okay, and then probably my. <coughs> At least my last question is, uh, so previously, because I was just curious, Katie had shared with me all the stuff that goes into these, getting these Chromebooks out, bringing them in, disinfecting them, doing all this stuff is, you're still in that boot. I Good see, night. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so do we have the, do we have the manpower? For because this is huge. If you think about the number of students we have, absolutely. Do we have the manpower? <laughs> and that's where we're also asking for some services as well to ask for some assistance from our vendors to see if they can also help us get those things together because it is a timely need. We want to make sure we're following all of that COVID protocol that we we did in the spring with everything. Okay, awesome. Thank y'all. This is a very informative presentation. And Tom, I hope I didn't take any of your questions. I'm sure I didn't, because mine were very surface level, so we should be good. So since you mentioned COVID protocol, let me just kind of cover that real quickly so everyone is aware of what, we're, what we are talking about. So not only is the device prepared and enrolled in our network so that it's on our staff and entered into our inventory system, but the device is also sanitized. We use microfiber cloths and the specific sanitization um, liquid that we've been provided here in SciFair. 
and they spray that on that cloth, they wipe everything down, it is then sanitized. Of course, everyone who's doing that is wearing masks and gloves. It's sanitized, it's then placed inside of a two gallon Ziploc bag and that is sealed. So everything is sanitized and sealed. When that gets to that child, nobody else has opened that device. So everything inside is completely sealed. Same thing works with those hot spots. The out, those hot spots are cleaned, the cords are cleaned, everything that goes and it's placed into a Ziploc bag. So when those students receive it, they receive everything in a Ziploc bag that is completely sealed and has not been touched by you know, human hands except for in gloves. Ms. Blackcher? Yes. Um, my first question is for uh, Dr. Macias in that <clears throat> I'm wondering about our CTE courses, Linda, and um, I'm thinking my, my middle school granddaughter, I was asking her the other day what classes she's taking uh, in the fall, and she was talking about, uh, I think it's called production manufacturing, which in my, back in the dark ages, we call wood shop or something like that. <laughs> and uh, then I'm thinking about our students who take welding, and these are all, those type of classes are very much hands-on. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to handle that? Ms. Blackshear, uh, we will be able to provide uh, some of the instruction virtually through, through Schoology, mm -hmm. through our teachers providing uh, live instruction, demonstrations, mm -hmm. but you're right, there are cases when the students, you don't have a choice, the student has to be there mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to be able to earn the hours of actually working with the, with the machinery. Mm -hmm. And so the guidance from the state says that, that, uh, we, that we need to be, be sure that we're up from with parents about some of the classes that will require the student to come to the school to be able to utilize uh, uh, you know, the, the, the machinery, the welding machinery, mm -hmm. to be able to earn their hours if they choose to go, if they choose the remote option. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, another question, and this probably is for technology, for Karen probably. Uh, we talked about every student having a device, receiving a Chromebook. What about the hot spots? Are those going to be neat by need only, or will every student receive one of those? That's going to be based on the family survey that we send out. Okay. And as students need that device, that's how those will be distributed. Um, that's why we're sending out the surveys, because we know that that's very high possibility. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No more. Uh, the real Mr. Jackson, go ahead. <laughs> you know, and I also take that as a compliment because Don Ryan has a head full of hair and I have none whatsoever. <clears throat> I really have no substantive questions. I do have some for the viewing audience. I have been waiting eight and a half, nine years for y'all to come and present this so that I can vote on it. I even had to endure my first month as a trustee with a 30-minute lecture from General Counsel Marnie Sims on the subject of technology. Uh, so I'm obviously in favor of the concept, but a couple of uh, follow-up questions. Don already touched on uh, the purchase versus lease option. Um, along that, and, uh, and Mark talked about how big is big, how small is small numbers. Along the line of both of those, we do have a certain loss rate. Uh, we have an idea what the loss rate is. Do your numbers provide for that loss rate during the year? Yes. So are you already building in that extra capacity as part of this? Yes, sir. And, and basically what, we, what we, they found, what Katie and Karen have found based on their previous experience is a loss rate of about 1%. So you've already built in, you know, we have 118,000 kids, you've built in mm -hmm. the growth, and then you've built in the anticipated loss rate. Yes, when we were um, actually getting our numbers together for all this, it was going to be over 120,000 devices. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, that loss rate is not just on the device itself, but charges, chargers, Correct. and uh, as well as hotspots. Have you also built in for your mobile hotspots excess capacity? Because I suspect you will have some parents who may not respond as swiftly as you would like for the need for hotspot. 
Um, yes. Yes, we have, and another thing that we've done is we're working with, or at least we're asking in the proposal with the um, bit, uh, quotes, is that the ability, and a lot of them will work with us on this, is that if a device isn't being used, we can actually disconnect the service for that device and then reconnect it again so that we're not paying for service on a device that's not being utilized. Um, a follow-up question. So Julie asked you to break out between uh, bond and uh, GNA, um, and Don touched on that uh, as well. For our viewing audience for the bond funds, will that be uh, a time period for the bonds that is tied to the anticipated life of the asset that we're purchasing? Yes, yes, sir. And, and, and just for the viewing audience, it's for technology equipment such as Chromebooks, it's five years, and then for infrastructure, which is not part of this, it's 10 years. Uh, we also used uh, a term called life cycle. So will this have a life cycle shorter than that five years as technology increases, or in this case, do we think the life cycle is about the same as the estimated life? Probably ab about the same. What we're planning to do is, of course, we already have the devices we have that are already on a replacement cycle. And then these particular devices, uh, Chromebooks is, is, we as a district choose to replace every five years, but we necessarily may not have to replace every five years. So we're gonna try to structure it where we replace those devices and you know, not have them all be replaced at the same time. So we feel very comfortable with that. So that addresses the hardware. Do we have enough software licenses already approved? Does this cover additional Correct. software licenses? Yes. Or will you come back to us to increase the number of software licenses? No, we already licenses? have the software licenses that we took care of For, for all 118,000 mm -hmm. students. Excellent. Uh, I, assume, I assume you're referring to Schoology. Is that what you're referring to? Well, everything that we're going to need, Correct. You know, be, because Mark said that uh, we have to plan as if everybody will be virtual. We also have to plan as if everybody will be on campus and we have to plan for some of each. Would so in anything else? <clears throat> no, we, we're fine. We have all those, yes, sir. Um, and, and this is a, a question that We've asked Linda twice, but I think it bears asking and answering again. For the students who happen to stay at home, why is it that they just don't get a free-for-all vacation? <laughs> well, from the instructional standpoint, because the Texas Education Code says that we are to educate all students and provide the Texas essential knowledge and skills. And, and then, as you as board members know that our philosophy inside fair, Dr. Henry says it all the time, is opportunity for all. And so we've got to provide the opportunity for, for effective, uh, high quality instruction for all of our students. And but, but how do we monitor so, so let's say I'm staying home, and I would have chosen the stay-at-home concept, and I was never a good student until I got to college. What's to prevent me from turning on my school-issued computer and then walking out in the backyard? Well, first of all, um, I'll just share again that, that school, vert, school, remote school will look very different than, than it did in the, in the spring. And so there will be, our students will be having uh, live on, on demand, or a live in real time instruction from, from, our, uh, from our teachers. So they'll be able to monitor that way as well. But also through the systems we have in place. So when our students log, in, in, log into uh, uh, our single sign-on system, for example, we can, we can tell what activities they did in the different systems, whether it's iExplore or Read 180 or Achieve 3000, we're able to tell how much, how long they were idle and how long they were actually working. And more importantly, through Schoology, we're able to get a, 
uh, we can print out for every student we wanted to the different activities that, that were completed there or loaded up as well. So there are many ways at the elementary school, at the elementary level, uh, it is part of our curriculum that our teachers keep monitoring notebooks, they, that they do conferring sessions with students. So all of that is documented on an ongoing basis. So basically there is in fact a pathway that the students will be following and there are various checkpoints along the way that are actually digitally recorded and captured. Absolutely. It will, we will have the same scope and sequence, whether our students are face-to-face are, uh, -face or in school. We will have the same checkpoints and benchmarks for the students. We will have the same uh, grading guidelines. In fact, that's part of the guidelines from, from, from the state, whether students are, are, are physically in the classroom or they are, or they are remote, and the expectations for learning will be the same as well. Uh, last year, or maybe two years ago, we had a number of math students come to the board meeting, and they requested that we have that we offer a course in differential equations as well as advanced calculus applications. Uh, the difficulty is they were spread among a number of different high schools. Clearly, we didn't have 20. Take it back to when my children were at over at Libai. There weren't, they wanted to take French, but there weren't enough students to have French, so the only foreign language offering was Spanish. So as part of this, as we evolve, will we be able to have students, whether they're at home or on campus, be able to take some of these courses that may only be offered at one particular uh, high school campus? Another example is, uh, a handful of years ago, German IV was only offered at uh, Cy Fair High School. So the students had to drive their first period and then return to their home campus. So is that an advantage of this, or will we <coughs> be it, able it, to address uh, it? Mr. Jackson, we already do some of that. For example, geometry, eighth grade students taking geometry. We, uh, there, there, are, there are many times where the student is at the uh, middle school, at their middle school, and they connect into the high school uh, classroom to be able to access uh, the geometry content. So we already have uh, some experience we're doing this, but yes, it provides many more opportunities that we can provide for our students. So what I heard you say is we already have real-time video instruction in the same fashion that we've had it at colleges and universities for the last, I don't know, 15 years. But we, we see the opportunity to be able to enhance it further. So is we, that a correct understanding? That is correct. There are many opportunities that we that we can continue that we can now provide. Uh, clearing up uh, one item, we use the acronym of LTE in two entirely different settings: one from a technology perspective, and one from uh, to to describe the program. So, if you would go over what the two different LTEs are for so, me. The two different LTEs, the 4G LTE has to do with broadband connectivity from a service provider. And, and what does LTE stand for? Well, I knew you were going to ask me to remember that acronym. Um, so is that long-term evolution? Yes, sir. That's, that's what it stands for. And that's um, typically what is whenever we go for internet connectivity for our cell phones or for a, a hotspot device, that's the verbiage that we use is a 4G LTE broadband wireless connection. So those fit together so that we know that that has to do with internet connectivity or connectivity to resources, remote resources. And then the LTE that we use for CIFAIR ISD, we've, we've labeled it CFISD LTE one-to-one -one, so that we're learning together everywhere in a, with a one-to-one -one environment for devices for our students. Learning together everywhere yes, versus uh, long-term evolution. You also used a phrase and you've presented uh, to the board before your team has, uh, but for the viewing audience, it may be somewhat new. You, you called it proof of concept Wi-Fi on buses. So explain what that means. So we, uh, there's a lot of school districts across the nation that are putting wireless internet connections on the buses and putting the buses in neighborhoods where there's few or no internet access because of economically needs or some other, maybe there's not a, the access from providers there. So we actually took that concept and tested it with a provider that we work with 
put it on two buses, took it to, apart to two apartment complexes that we knew there was limited connectivity based on our summer school surveys, and we put those buses in that area, and the connectivity, um, actually we were very surprised with the bandwidth that we were able to receive and the connections that we were able to receive. Knowing that it's on the bus and the students can get connectivity a limited connectivity just to the bus connection and we have to realize that a bus is not very big therefore it doesn't distribute it through the whole apartment complex but it provides some connectivity so we did that and um, was very successful so now we have the ability and I'm going to use the word mobile that we have a mobile solution that if we need to take internet access to a handful of connectivity or where we've got connection that's needed we have the ability to park a bus in a, a parking lot somewhere for someone or a mobile group of people to get connected. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Bob, that covers all my questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, great presentation. I'm sorry, Karen, you no, can I get up. No. Uh, just a couple of questions uh, because I think the board has pretty much covered all the questions I had. Uh, and one of them is, and I'm sorry, Karen, it's going to be for Dr. Macias. Oh, <laughs> Linda, I was just wondering, whenever we're talking about that, and I know there was a certain percentage we were looking at we felt like would be staying home, will our teachers be teaching a combination in their classrooms, or will we have teachers that will be strictly teaching at home or from, from a classroom but to at-home students? Uh Mr. Kobe, we're, we're still working all of that all of that out, but what we do have, and, and, and we're going to be working with our, I think you all heard me uh, last year talk about our COVID principals committee, so we're actually meeting with them next week, and we're going to talk to them about, about different uh, instructional arrangements uh, for, for their teachers, uh, because depending on how many students end up coming back, they, they may have a teacher who has uh, a classroom of students plus maybe two or three that are connecting to the classrooms mr. Jackson has been saying so they're getting their instruction uh, but it's also possible that the, that the principal may choose to have uh, teacher a doing all the face-to-face -face and teacher B doing doing all of the uh, remote it just depends on how many students uh, end up in each of the individual classrooms so there'll be options there uh, so that I'm sorry so I'm here, but our teachers will all be reporting to the building. Okay, and that was that was another question I had because uh, with social messaging that we hear and and people knowing that we're on the board, I was hearing that they were getting a variety of uh, activities from teachers during the spring. That some teachers will be checking in quite often, and then some would just check in every once in a while. And I assured them that there was a certain time that they needed to be on call or be part of it. And that was part of the way we had it set up. But I, th I also think that that's a whole lot of rumor that gets started. And I really want that to be quelched as, fa as fast as we can. So uh, our teachers will, they will have to be checking in and they'll have to be there in person, basically, we, right? We will have... You know, again, this is going to look very different than what we saw in in uh, in the spring. That's why we purchased Schoology to make sure that we were going to be able to provide uh, real life face to face the teach being able to see the teacher real life instruction by the teacher uh, for the students. So not not the students not just doing activities or the teacher checking in once a week or or a lesson once a week. This is gonna this is gonna be communicating working with the teacher on a daily basis with a schedule so so we will have a, a schedule for every single uh, grade level we will have to actually have to submit that to the state with what our instruction is going to look like and so the schedule will will define all of the different all the different times when the teacher is working with students throughout the day okay mr. Covey if I could yeah. just just add to that it, this is like comparing, a, I'd, I'd say, a Model T we had last spring to a, a brand new 2020 car. I mean, the, the platform's going to be much uh, better. We're going to have more live instruction. There's going to be synchronous, asynchronous 
opportunities for students in a virtual environment. So this is, this is a whole different ball game. And plus with the proposal that we have uh, for you today, if the board approves, everyone's going to have a device because again, I would love to be able to tell those of you at the table and those that are watching us online what this uh, school year is going to look like, but uh, just like national and state leaders, we have no idea, but we want to be prepared and we want to make sure that not only do our students not, we don't want them to fall behind, we want them to uh, progress uh, whatever their situation might be. One thing I want to add, and, and Linda did a great job of touching uh, on the uh, in instructional uh, portions of what a day will look like but Teresa I'm putting you a little bit on the spot here uh, ex explain from a funding standpoint and the state standpoint uh, why we have to monitor whether a student is in person or virtual yeah and I think that's one of the going to be one of the key differences in what parents and students experienced and even teachers experienced in the spring versus what we have to we're going to be required to do uh, in the fall it, it, we actually will have to take attendance for each class period and how teachers are able to take that attendance again as Dr. Macias uh, indicated we're going to have kind of a hybrid if you will of what the state is prevent, um, uh, provided as options there's absolutely going to be live instruction provided in addition there's going to be asynchronous instruction where, where students are going to be working independently on some activities but as far as that attendance it could be that they're, they're on in its first period at 720 and the teachers taking attendance of everyone's there and they're giving them the uh, instruction for the day lesson whatever uh, another day may be that the uh, attendance for that class or the next class, there's three different criteria or ways that a teacher can take attendance in that class. It could be actually logged on time into the learning management system, doing things on that, which obviously captures that time. Could be submitting assignments or activities that are required to, um, that are due for that class. And the third could be that direct contact with teacher where they're actually uh, either seeing them live or on the phone or email or whatever it just depends and that gives districts flexibility who do not have uh, the opportunity to provide all students with devices so that kind of satisfies that low-tech accountability if you will but we will maintain attendance and have to take attendance in every single class and that's the accountability we have to meet in order to receive funding for ADA uh, in addition, uh, you know, we've had a lot of discussions, if you recall, in the spring when we were, that was before we closed school, we suspended all of the exemption criteria, attendance criteria for exemptions and perfect attendance. We're not going to have to do this with uh, this model because what would happen if a student does what uh, Mr. Jackson was kind of sharing as an example, if a student just kind of says, eh, I'm going to wait till Friday to do my work, guess what? and they don't log on or they don't do anything, they've been counted absent in all their classes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So we, we believe by maintaining all of our attendance incentive, there's also that incentive then to get that kid logged on, staying connected every single class period, every single day. So much more accountability, both for the teacher and for the student. And, and just to add, because Teresa, you already mentioned this, uh, that attendance piece, again, if the student is sick, the student can log in from home and is counted present. Or if the student had to go to some family event, as long as the student is doing their work remotely and we can document that, then they're counting present. I wanted to add one more thing, Mr. Covey. During summer, right now in summer school, the instruction looks very different than the spring as well. It is actually the type of instruction that we are that we're talking about. The teacher is delivering instruction, working with with uh, with students every single day. Okay. Uh, yes. Dr. Messia, just to clarify, also on the attendance, if that student was under quarantine for 14 days, they would be able to be counted present if they were virtual, right? That is correct. If they meet that criteria of logging in every logging day and doing right. an assignment, they have to do the work. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, they have to do the work. Okay, thank you very much. And I kind of will 
reiterate what Mr. Jackson said because I remember from being on the board, we talked about three to one, and when then we moved it to 2.5 to one, and then a two to one, and I don't want to thank COVID for anything, but I think it's awesome that we're going to be in a one to one now. So that's something we've been aiming for for years, and so it's good to have it. Uh, are there any other questions from the board members? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Yep. President, I move that the board authorize the superintendent to approve the purchase of devices for students, LTE internet access for students, and other items needed to support a one-to-one -one solution through the Department of Information Resources Purchasing Cooperative at an amount not to exceed $44 million. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Do I have a second? I second. Uh, thank you, Ms. Blackshear. Do we have any questions or concerns right now? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. And that's unanimous. Uh, I don't think we have any further business. I would like to thank you all for the presentation. I want to thank the board members for taking their lunch and coming up here and working. And uh, everybody have the rest of your July an enjoyable time. And we'll see you in August. Thank you.